For years, you've been told to drink eight glasses of water, full stop. No timing, no strategy, and no attention to how your body actually handles fluids after dark. Then 3 a.m. arrives, your bladder wakes you up like an alarm you never set, and the rest of the night unravels. Tonight, I want to give you a different approach. I'm Dr. Linda Parker, urologist and educator in healthy aging. My goal is simple. Teach you how to drink water in a smarter way, so your body stays hydrated, your bladder stays calm, and those 3 a.m. bathroom trips fade into the background. Let's begin by clearing one myth. Getting up at night is not just your age. It's your timing, your evening habits, your circulation, your sleep rhythm, and sometimes your bladder or prostate sending messages you can decode. When you change the pattern, the pattern changes you. Hydration done right doesn't mean more or less water. It means the right water at the right time, with the right companions, moving through the body at the right pace. Here is the principle that guides everything else. Your kidneys follow your clock. They respond to light, meals, posture, and the pressure changes in your legs. If you pour most of your fluids into the last three to four hours of the day, your kidneys will do exactly what they're supposed to do, make urine, right when you're trying to sleep. If you shift hydration earlier, encourage your body to release the fluid in your legs before bed, and avoid bladder irritants late, the overnight system quiets down. Now let's make this practical. I'm going to give you a simple daily rhythm and a nighttime playbook. Then we'll adjust it for common situations. Men with prostate symptoms, women in midlife, people who sit or stand for long hours, and anyone who exercises in the evening. By the end, you'll know exactly what to do today and what to expect over the next two weeks. Start with your daytime rhythm. When you wake up, your body is slightly dehydrated and your brain is ready for fluid. Take your first glass within 30 minutes of waking. Slow sips, not a chug. If you enjoy a slice of lemon in that water, go ahead. It encourages slower sipping and feels refreshing, but it isn't mandatory. The key is pace. Sipping gives your gut and kidneys time to absorb and distribute without creating a fast flood to your bladder. Through the morning, aim for steady intake. Think of it as front-loading. You're giving your body what it needs when it's awake, moving, and better able to handle fluids. At lunch, drink normally with your meal. After lunch, take a 15 to 20 minute walk or at least a few active minutes on the stairs. Movement acts like a pump. It helps your legs return fluid to your circulation so it can be processed during the day rather than at night. If you sit for long periods, set a timer for brief standing breaks. The more you bring gravity and muscle into your team, the less your bladder has to do after midnight. Now, the part that changes everything. The evening window. Picture the hours between dinner and bedtime. This is where most of the 3 a.m. trips are born. Here's a simple framework. Have your last big glass of plain water about three hours before bedtime. That's your cutoff for any large volume. From that point on, use small, deliberate sips if you're thirsty, just enough to wet the mouth and throat. Think teaspoons, not cups. Avoid late caffeine, alcohol, and bubbly or very acidic drinks in the last five to six hours. They stimulate the bladder or pull water through your system at the worst time. Look at your dinner. Very salty or heavily processed evening meals hold on to water. Your body will try to balance that overnight. A lighter, real food dinner with vegetables helps you wake up less puffy and less urgent. And one more game changer, the legs up routine. 90 minutes before bedtime, lie down and elevate your feet on a pillow or the end of the couch for 15 to 20 minutes. You're asking your veins to return daytime fluid from the lower legs back to your circulation while you're still awake. Stand up, move around, and use the restroom. Many people notice that this single routine cuts their first nighttime trip in half within a week. 
Before bed, try the double void strategy. Empty your bladder, finish your light bedtime tasks, face, teeth, pajamas, and then empty again. The second void clears residual urine that often triggers that 3 a.m. signal. It takes two minutes and pays you back with hours. Let's talk about temperature and speed. Ice cold water right before bed can feel refreshing, but it also encourages faster drinking and a little stomach constriction that sends fluid forward quickly. Lukewarm or room temperature sips discourage chugging and are gentler on the system. Again, the point isn't rules, it's rhythm. Calm rhythm equals calm bladder. Your sleep environment matters more than most people realize. A hot room increases sweating and thirst. A very dry room triggers mouth breathing. Aim for a cool, comfortable bedroom and nasal breathing at night. If your mouth is dry at bedtime, take a single small sip, swish, and swallow. Don't bring a large bottle to the nightstand unless you've had a fever, intense evening exercise, or your clinician has advised otherwise. The presence of a big bottle invites big sips. Big sips invite big trips. Now I'll tailor this plan to common situations. If you exercise after work, hydrate intelligently. Start your workout already hydrated from the morning and afternoon. During evening training, take small, frequent sips. Afterward, rehydrate in measured amounts over the next 60 to 90 minutes, not all at once. Finish your last moderate glass at least three hours before bed. If you're truly thirsty later, take tiny sips only. A warm shower and gentle stretching help your nervous system downshift so your bladder isn't triggered by post-workout adrenaline. If you sit or stand for long stretches, fluid collects in your lower legs. That fluid becomes urine when you lie down. The solution is mechanical and elegant. Walk after dinner. Elevate your feet for a short period as I described. And consider light ankle pumps while seated. 15 repetitions flexing and pointing your toes. Act like a calf muscle pump. You're teaching your body to finish the fluid cycle before lights out. If you often wake with urgency but produce only small amounts, your bladder may be irritable rather than full. Late stimulants like caffeine, alcohol, colas, energy drinks, and some artificial sweeteners can heighten that irritability. Swap them out in the evening and watch what happens over 10 to 14 nights. Many people are surprised to discover that their overactive nights were actually overstimulated nights. If you're a man with prostate symptoms, weak stream, hesitancy, or getting up more than once, it's even more important to respect the evening window. Distribute fluids earlier, avoid late stimulants, and try the double void technique consistently. Gentle pelvic floor relaxation helps. Sit comfortably, inhale softly through your nose, and on the slow exhale, let your belly and pelvic floor drop. No pushing. A minute or two of this before your final bathroom trip often makes the difference between a restless night and a quiet one. If you're a woman in midlife or beyond, hormonal changes can alter bladder sensitivity. The strategy is the same. Front load fluids, protect the evening window, avoid irritants late, but add a calm wind down. Dim lights, warm hands, or a warm compress over the lower abdomen, and slow breathing. That combination tells your nervous system to stand down. The bladder listens. Now, let's build your two-week night routine so your body has time to adapt. You'll repeat the same simple pattern. The power is in consistency. Days 1-3. Establish the rhythm. First glass within 30 minutes of waking. Steady sipping through the morning. A normal glass with lunch a walk, or steps after lunch. Last big glass exactly three hours before bedtime. Small sips only after that. Double void. Legs up 15 minutes, 90 minutes before bed. Keep your bedroom cool and dark. Days four to seven, trim the irritants. Cut caffeine after 2 p.m. Avoid alcohol on weeknights if nocturia is a problem. If you do drink, 
Keep it with dinner and hydrate earlier in the day. Avoid very salty evening meals. Note your wake-up times. Don't judge. Just observe. Days 8-10. Dial in movement and posture. Add a 10-minute evening stroll, even if you already exercised earlier. If you sit a lot, practice ankle pumps in the evening and restart the legs up routine if you skipped it. Keep the small sips rule. Days 11-14. Fine tune. Ask yourself three questions each morning. Did I wake? What time? Was my bladder full or just irritated? If you woke once around your normal wake time and went back to sleep quickly, that's a win. If you woke twice, but both times were linked to a very salty dinner or a late drink, you have your answer. Protect your evening window and watch the pattern smooth out. Most people feel a difference within the first week. Fewer awakenings, less urgency, and faster return to sleep. If you don't, stay with it for the full two weeks. You're teaching your kidneys and bladder a new dance. They learn through repetition. Let's tackle a few questions I get every day. How much is a big glass? For most adults, 8 to 12 ounces counts as a glass. Your total daily fluid needs depend on body size, activity, temperature, and health. The strategy here is about timing and pace, not forcing a fixed number. Is sparkling water okay in the evening? Many people find bubbles a little more stimulating to the bladder. If nights are a problem, keep sparkling water earlier in the day and choose still water in the evening. What about herbal tea? Soothing teas like chamomile can help you unwind, but they're still fluid. If you enjoy a small cup, finish it at least three hours before bed. If you're very sensitive, try a warm, unsweetened sip, literally a few mouthfuls, closer to bedtime rather than a full mug. Do I need electrolytes at night? Not for most people. Save any electrolyte beverages for earlier in the day or after midday activity. In the evening, simple water in small sips is your friend. What if I'm truly thirsty at bedtime? Take two or three small sips, swish, swallow, and place the glass out of reach. If your mouth is dry every night, look at your bedroom air, your evening salt, and your caffeine. If snoring or mouth breathing is part of your nights, talk to a professional. Breathing well helps sleeping well. What if my job forces late dinners? Keep the dinner light and lower in salt, take a short walk afterward, and lock in the legs up routine and double void. Protect the small sips rule the last 90 minutes. Now I'll give you a one day template you can start tonight and repeat tomorrow. On waking, one glass, slow sips. Morning, steady sipping, not constant chugging. Lunch, one glass with the meal, short walk afterward. Afternoon, another glass if you're outdoors or active. Otherwise, sip to thirst. Three hours before bed, last big glass, set a reminder on your phone. 90 minutes before bed, feed up 15 minutes, then move, then bathroom. Bedtime, double void, cool room, nasal breathing, small sips only if truly needed, that's the template. It's not dramatic, and that's why it works. Your bladder wants predictability. Your kidneys like daylight. Your legs appreciate movement. Put them on the same team, and they reward you with quiet nights. Let me add three powerful micro habits that sit quietly in the background but change outcomes over time. First, lighten dinner. Try finishing the main part of your meal two to three hours before bed. If you need a small snack later, Choose something simple and not salty. Your body rests better when it isn't juggling heavy digestion and fluid balance at midnight. Second, cool your sleep cave. A slightly cooler room reduces overheating and thirst. It also encourages nasal breathing, which keeps the mouth moist and the brain calmer. Third, respect your wake window. If you do get up once, move slowly. Keep lights low, avoid screens, and get back to bed promptly. The fewer extra stimuli you add, the less likely you are to wake again. Now, a word for the groups who need special attention. 
If you take diuretics or other medications that affect fluid balance, ask your clinician whether you can shift them earlier in the day. Never change prescription timing without guidance. The goal is to align your medication's peak effect with daylight, not nighttime. If you have swelling in your ankles by evening, the legs up routine is not optional, it's essential. Add compression socks during the day if your clinician approves and keep that short evening walk. If you snore loudly, wake up gasping, or feel unrefreshed despite enough hours in bed, talk to a professional about sleep apnea. Untreated apnea fragments sleep and can worsen nocturia. Treat the airway and the bladder often calms down. If you notice burning, blood in urine, fever, chills, pelvic pain, or a sudden change in urinary habits, seek care promptly. Those are not hydration timing issues. They require evaluation. I want to leave you with this. Healthy nights are built during the day. When you treat hydration as a rhythm, front-loaded, paced, and wisely tapered, your bladder relaxes. When you move your body after meals and let gravity work for you before bed, your kidneys finish their job early. When you keep evenings gentle, less salt, fewer irritants, small sips only, you stop fighting biology and start partnering with it. If I had to compress this entire lesson into one sentence, it would be this. Drink most of your water with the day, give your legs a head start, and let the night be for sleep, not plumbing. Never think it's too late to reclaim quiet nights. Your body is adaptable at any age. Tonight you'll change one thing, your last big glass three hours before bed. Tomorrow you'll add the legs up routine. The next day you'll double void. Two weeks from now, you may barely remember the last time 3 a.m. felt like your nightly appointment. If this guide helped you feel more in control of your nights, share it with someone who needs it. Tell me in the comments which part you'll try first and report back in a week with your results. If you want more clear, respectful guidance on hydration, circulation, and healthy aging, subscribe. I'm Dr. Linda Parker and I'll be here to help you sleep through the night, one smart habit at a time. Disclaimer, this video is for general educational purposes and is not a substitute for personalized medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Do not start, stop, or change any medications without speaking with your healthcare professional. Seek care promptly if you experience fever, burning with urination, pelvic pain, blood in the urine, or sudden worsening nighttime urination.